In this video, let's understand PLT and GOT. PLT stands for Procedure Linkage Table and GOT stands for Global Offset Table. When we call functions like printf from libc, they are dynamically linked to our binary and then executed. Remember, this is not true for binaries that are statically linked. When functions from shared libraries like libc are called, a call to a piece of code in procedure linkage table is made. This will in turn take help of dynamic linker which will search through libc library for the address of our printf function and it will add an entry in global offset table with the address of the function invoked. Once the address is resolved, it will get executed and the control will be transferred to the saved return address. When the same function is called for the next time in the code, the address stored in the global offset table will be used instead of invoking dynamic linker to resolve the function address again. So as you can see here on the picture, the PLT stub code is not taking the help of this dynamic linker anymore to get the address of printf function from libc. Instead, it is directly using the entry that is available in global offset table. So to summarize, PLT is just a stub code which is going to invoke this dynamic linker to resolve the addresses of the functions that are being invoked from libc. Once it resolves the address, the address is going to be updated in global offset table. If the same function is invoked for the next time, instead of resolving the address once again, the address will be picked from the global offset table. This is how procedure linkage table and global offset table works. I have left some low level details during this explanation, but I think this should be enough for now to understand what PLT and GOT are. Now let's see a quick demo of how PLT and GOT look like in GDB. Let's navigate to x86 underscore 64 and let's navigate to red to PLT. Here we do have two files. The first one is vulnerable.c and the second file is make file. Let's quickly take a look at the contents of vulnerable.c. If you notice, we have main function. Inside the main function, we have three functions. The first one is printf. The second one is vuln function. And get date is the third one. After invoking this vuln function, we have a buffer overflow here within the definition. And inside the definition of get date, there is nothing much. There is a system function which is invoked, which is actually printing the date. And we have another printf. Now to understand PLT and GOT, we can use these two function calls as example. Because to understand GOT and PLT, we need a function being called more than once. So printf here is a very good candidate for us to understand PLT and GOT. Now let's take a look at the contents of make file. If you notice, I have added an additional flag here, which is dash no dash PIE. This flag must be specified here for this demo to work. The reason for that is we are going to use the addresses within the binary while writing the exploit. And if we don't specify this flag, the addresses are going to be changed on each run. This is something like ASLR within the binary, right? So let's use this make file to compile the program. So I'm just typing make. There are some warnings, but seems like we have our vulnerable binary ready. Now let's load this binary using GDB. And let's type this as main. If you notice, there is a puts call here, which is our printf. If you remember, there is another printf within get date. So let's also type this as get date. If you notice, there is another puts call here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a breakpoint at these two puts calls. So I'm just copying the first address 
and I'm just setting up a breakpoint there. And I'm also copying this address associated with the second puts call. And I'm setting up a breakpoint there. Hit enter. Now let's run the binary using the command run. And if you notice, the first breakpoint is hit, which is at the call to puts function. Now let's observe where the control is being redirected to. This is where the control is being redirected to. We are being redirected to execute some instructions in PLT section. Immediately after that, there is a jump instruction to puts at got.plt. So after landing in this PLT section, we are making another jump to this section, which is got.plt. Now let's keep executing SI instruction. So we have taken a jump and we have taken another jump. If you notice, our execution now is landed in this section. Now we don't know what this section is. We don't know where we are. So let's quickly take the output of VM map and let's try to understand which program in memory these addresses belong to. So FE7A E0. And if you notice, this is what the address belongs to. What it means is these addresses belong to this LD library, which is the dynamic linker or loader. This program is going to find out the address of puts function from libc and global offset table will be updated with an entry. This entire process is called lazy binding. In a nutshell, this dynamic linker or loader does all the heavy lifting in the background and finds the correct addresses of functions in other shared libraries even when ASLR is on and dynamically links it to executable via the global offset table. So when the puts function is executed for the next time, the address will be readily available in the global offset table. Now let's type C to continue our execution. Let's enter something. Now we hit the second breakpoint. You can see here we are about to call the puts function. And we also have another instruction which is taking a jump to this got.plt section. Now let's type SI and observe if we land on the dynamic linker section once again. I'm just typing SI. If you observe, we are already in the puts function. This time, the dynamic linker did not have to do the loading once again as the address of the puts function was already available in the global offset table. Let's quickly confirm that these addresses indeed belong to puts from the libc library. So I'm going to just type vm map libc. If you notice this, this address is ending with 7e 4d5a0 and that should be in between these two addresses. That means these addresses belong to libc library, right? So that confirms that we have landed inside the puts function directly within libc library and the dynamic linker did not have to do the function resolution once again. So this is how the procedure linkage table and global offset table works. Just to recap, when a function which is available in libc is called from within the library, a stub code within PLT is going to be executed, which in turn is going to take help from this dynamic linker, which is going to go through the libc library and search for the actual address of this printf function. And it is going to update that in global offset table. When the next time the printf function is invoked, Instead of going through the dynamic linker, this address will be picked from the global offset table directly. So that's how procedure linkage table and the global offset table work.